What's so different with this plan from the Northern Ireland backstop that you opposed so vigorously? Well, it's massively different. It's a completely new proposal in that uh, we leave the customs union, the single market, the European Union as one nation together, Northern Ireland with the rest of the United Kingdom, out of the customs union, part of the UK customs union, not the EU customs union, out of the VAT regime. And importantly and very significantly, no regulatory borders down the Irish Sea unless and until the Northern Ireland Assembly, Unionists and Nationalists, both have the power to decide, agree to it. And that's a very significant advance. Because I, I've lost count of the number of times DUP politicians have said, oh, you can't have an economic border down the Irish Sea, yeah. but you're now saying, oh, well, you can if Stormont says so. Well, we're saying that it's now in the hands of unionist politicians and nationalist politicians. That's a massive safeguard for us. We're not dependent anymore on Westminster under these proposals. And, uh, you know, these proposals, we were told with the withdrawal agreement couldn't be reopened. Here we now have the British Prime Minister saying clearly that this will have to be a drastic revision of the treaty uh, proposals. But this ensures that the power, in terms of any regulatory divergence, is in the hands of local politicians. We control that now, and that is entirely in line. Do you remember back in December 2017 when the joint report was published? We got inserted at that point that if there was to be any regulatory difference between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom, it could only be by the consent of the Assembly, in the same way that we have differences in the single electricity market and for health and agri-food and so on. Well, let me quote your own words from December 2017 back on you. You said at that time, we'll not allow any settlement to be agreed which causes a divergence politically or economically economically of Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK because to do so would be catastrophic for yes. everyone in Northern Ireland. But you've now got a plan that talks about goods being checked no. as they move from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. So no, no, you, no. you have changed your tune, haven't you? No, 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 no. Don't, don't fall for propaganda. The reality is that that can only be done if unionists in the Assembly agree to it. And that decision would be made at the end of the transition period. The reality is that there is nothing agreed on that aspect at all, and we remain absolutely wedded to the view that the economic and constitutional integrity of the United Kingdom is sacrosanct. That's why we're delighted with the news that these proposals mean that we're coming out of the EU customs union, we're, we're going to be in the UK customs union, and as far as regulatory divergence, no change at all, Mark, in the policy. It's now for the Northern Ireland Assembly. The safeguard is there. The, the, the absolute defences there within the Assembly, that nothing can be done unless unionists agree to that. So that's a, that actually is no change whatsoever, and I think it's a positive uh, development. Have you maybe been a bit too clever by half, because you've negotiated a veto for unionism, but that will mean that nationalists will look at this and say, hang on, to the Irish government, to the EU, don't buy into this at all. No, I mean, because everybody says they subscribe to the principles of the Belfast Agreement, uh, they say they believe in the way in which the governance of Northern Ireland should operate within the Assembly, which is the consent of unionists and nationalists. We were delighted when Boris Johnson put forward the letter in August, which underlined that principle. So people can't have it both ways. They either believe in the Belfast Agreement and the principles of the Good Friday Agreement, or they don't. So and there is no way that you might consider putting this to a majority vote in the Assembly so that the majority of people, if they approve EU alignment, can actually get their way? Well, no, the proposals make it very clear that the consent is on the basis of the 1998 Act. Therefore, it has to be parallel consent. But, you know, people are now talking about majority rule in Northern Ireland who for years derided to majority rule. And now when we say, well, let's go back to what's actually in the 1998 that everybody purports to support, then they somehow don't like that. Either people support the Belfast Agreement or they don't. And if they do, then they should abide by its rules and principles. And that is that you cannot, as Boris Johnson said in that letter, you can't have a backstop which is anti-democratic, which the Northern Ireland Assembly has no say over. You can't have one that doesn't have the consent of unionists. These proposals now are very, very clearly predicated on the whole of the Northern Ireland, United Kingdom leaving together out of the single market customs union, and we will only have regulatory difference if we agree to it. Nigel Dodds, thanks very much.